here today, God. Take your place, Lord. Take your place. In our hearts, in our mind, in the service, Father. For this is yours. This is ultimately yours, God. To my Father, let your presence saturate this place in the name of Jesus. The love of God, Father, embrace each and every one of us. As we declare your glorious resurrection, God, as we celebrate that you are alive, alive forevermore, alive forevermore, God.
first and the last. Wonderful Jesus. Truly God, as we declare, we thank you for saving us. We thank you, Lord, you are being sent from heaven to the earth, from earth to the cross, from cross to the grave, and from grave to the sky. Thank you, Jesus. And as we rejoice this morning, we allow for your Holy Spirit to speak to us today. We allow for your Holy Spirit to teach us today. We allow for your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to quicken us, O oh God, even to the understanding, Lord, that you want us to have. Use thy servant as you hide us under the shadow of thy wings, Father. And just be exalted, be exalted, be exalted. As we give back to you all the praises, the glory, and the honor. This be us, this we pray. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. And everybody says, Amen. amen. And Amen. And Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. So, if you want to come at the bear, happy Easter to you. And you boy, we are celebrating the whole world is celebrating Easter Sunday or celebrating what the Lord has done at the cross of Calvary. Let's turn your Bible with me in Matthew chapter 28, beginning verse 1 to 10. Sabayan po natin sa pagbasa. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And sabi po dito, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Verse 3 po, pakibasa. And verse 4, the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. Verse 5 po. Verse 6, sabay sabay po natin basahin. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Tingnan po natin ang 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 1 to 10. And sabi po rito, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you, which also you receive, and which you stand. Verse 2 po, asahin po natin. By which you also you. If you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. Verse 3. Verse 4. And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Philippians chapter 3, beginning verse 10 to 11. Nampu natin? Sabay sabi po natin basahin? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Ang Diyos po magpapala sa kanyang banal mga salita na ating po binasa sa pangalan ng ating Panginoon Yesus, mga kapo na po tayong lahat. The Lord bless us all as we read the Word of God. Mapapansin po natin as the whole world is celebrating, although not all the whole world knows what had happened at the cross of Calvary. Naalala ko po, when I was still in Japan, I stayed, I was assigned as a missionary pastor for two years and three months. I just arrived last January 20. Na kakadukot po kasi they do not know how to celebrate or they even, even do not know yung tinatawag po nating Lenten season. Lalo na yung pagdating sa pag pagpagkapasko ng pagkabuhay. Ala po sa kanila ang mga ganong mga bagay. Kaya po, nakakadungkot na maintindihan po natin o malaman po na marami po talaga mga tao ang hindi nakakalaan, nakakaalam ng mga bagay na ginawa ng ating Panginoon. What is called the resurrection? Moving on to the slide as we study the Word of God at ang ating pong tema is of course it is finished. Our title for today is The Power of Christ's Resurrection. As we move on to the introduction, as sabi po ng ating pag-aaralan, the resurrection distinguishes Christianity from all other religions. It is central to the Christian faith because it is the bodily resurrection of Jesus and it is one of the central truths of the gospel. 
Kung meron pong isang pinagtutunan, sinabi po, pinaalala po ni Pastor Joey last week sa kanya po pagtuturo about the blood of the Lamb, the blood of the Lord, precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, na ang apat na gospel, tinatawag po natin synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, pag sinabi pong synoptic gospel, ito po ay maraming pagkakahawig the week ng mga pangyayari sa buhay ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Mapapansin po natin, Matthew and Mark ay nagbigay po na napakaraming mga patutuo patungkol sa resurrecting power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pagdating naman po sa Luke, nagbigay din po siya. Pero pagdating po sa John, more than half of the scripture of the gospel ay binigyan niya ng tuon patungkol sa kamatayan at pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoon. Luke and John record the resurrection with the presence of the two angels while Matthew and Mark are concerned only with one apparently the chief spokesperson of the two. Mapapasin po natin, if we're going to study the scripture at pag, pagbubulayan po natin ang mga magagaling po mga tagapagturo ng uh, salita ng ating Pinoon, nandiyan dyan po ang mga eskriba, ang mga pariseyo, nandiyan dyan po ang mga essence, nandiyan dyan po ang marami mga great teachers of the law, but never had they believed ever and never had they teach in their preaching or in their teaching in the synagogues about the resurrecting power of the Lord Jesus Christ because they never believed in the resurrection. Kaya makikita po natin yung himala na ginawa po ng ating Diyos na buhay. Moving on to the next slide, please. Ang sabi po rito, the process of the two men is in keeping with the OT law or the Old Testament law of the witnesses. Makikita po natin yan sa Deuteronomy chapter 19. Beginning verse 15, and emphasizes that God, not robbers, has taken Jesus. Ito po ang laging sinasabi, o ito po ang pinakalat kasi ng mga taong nagpapako sa ating Panginoong Yesus sa Cruz ng Calvario. Nang malaman po nila na ang Panginoong Yesus ay nabuhay na magbuli, ang sabi po nila, sasabihin lahat ng mga nagbabantay uh, po sa kanyang libingan na siya ay ninakaw ng kanyang mga disipulo. But there is also a unanimity in the Gospels regarding the priminess of the woman in this event as the first one who received those of the resurrection. Ang una po nakalaan, nakatala sa salita ng Panginoon na nagbigay ng good news the first to evangelize and foretold about Jesus' resurrection are none other but the woman in the gospel and even though Jesus had promised to rise from the dead on the third day, his followers either disbelieved the promise or in grief had forgotten it. Alam po natin, natakot po silang lahat. After Jesus was crucified, nagtago na po lahat ng mga disipulo at sa takot because of desperation, because of discouragement, because of disappointment, akala po nila, hindi na mabubuhay na magbuli ang ating Diyos na buhay. Pero sabihin niyo po sa inyo katabi, na buhay na magbuli ang ating Panginoong Yesus. That's why we have the reason to celebrate today. Moving on to the next slide, please. But let's see po natin, the resurrection has two main parts. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verses 1 to 19, and according to 1 Corinthians 15, it speaks about the resurrection of Christ. In verses 20 to 58, makikita po natin about the resurrection of Christians. Kung wala pong naging pagkabuhay ng ating Panginoong Yesus, there will be also no resurrection from the dead for each and everyone who believes the Lord Jesus Christ and accepted Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Moving on to the next slide, please. Tingnan po natin, sinasabi po na salita ng Diyos, there are two division in verses 1 to 11 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15 again. It is as a disputable fact of history. And sa verse 12 to 19, it is an indispensable fact of theology. Kaya pag pinag-aaralan po natin ang patungkol po sa resurrection, binabalikan po natin ang ginawa ng ating Panginoong Yesus, ang himala ng Diyos, sa kanyang pagkabuhay, hindi po natin maalis na itong, ituloy po natin ito sa 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Moving on to the next slide, please. Tingnan po natin sa nasabi dito, ano po ang significance o ano po ang nagbabadya or the basis of the resurrection. Number one is the empty tomb. Doon po sa pinasa natin in Matthew chapter 28, beginning verse 5 and 6, ang sabi po ng angel na Mary Magdalene together with the other woman ay naroon. Ang sabi po sa verse 5, but the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. 
But he is not here, for he is risen, as he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay. Kaya nagulat po sila. Alam po natin istorya. Nagmamadaling po ang mga babaeng ko sa pamuna ni Maria Magdalena na nakalanas ng himala ng ating Panginoon. Kaya po natin si Maria Magdalena, she is considered as a prostitute during her time. And during the time, nang siya po ay lumapit sa ating Panginoon. Na, na, pinalimutan po siya na maraming mga tao, babatuhin na po siya hanggang sa mamatay. That according sa kanilang pong law, according po sa kanilang batas, ang lahat ng mga adulteress ay kailangan mamatay through stone or through stoning to of death. Kaya lang, the Lord Jesus was there to save her. Maraming pong instances na pinakita ng Panginoon ng Himala sa isang Mariang Magdalena ng nagkasala. Sabihin nyo nga sa inyo katabi, binigyan tayo ng Diyos ng kaligtasan. Kahit nagkasala tayo ng labis-labis. Amen? Kesa sobrang pagmamahal ni Maria Magdalena, siya po ay nagtatakbo na una po doon sa tomb, bagamat iniisip nila pa paano i-roll down, pa paano tatanggalin yung napakalaking bato dahil sobra po nung bigat that sealed the tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ, kaya nagulat po sila, the angel was there. And telling him, see for yourself, the linen is so still intact. Yung binalo, yung embalming linen na ginamit sa ating Panginoon, intact na intact pa at naroon pa rin. But the body is no longer there. Amen? So that was the antidote. And also the anti-cross in Matthew chapter 27, beginning verse 57 to 59, if we can show it this. Now when evening had come, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who himself had also become a disciple of Jesus. And this man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, and then Pilate commanded the body to be given to him. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Mapapansin po natin, the Lord was no longer hanging on the cross. Alam po natin, sinasabi na salita ng ating Painoon. Bago po lumabog ang araw, kailangan wala na pong naroong taong nakapako sa Cruz ng Calvario. And the scripture said it all right. Ang sabi po ng salita ng Diyos, nung lalapitan na siya ng mga centurion, para siya po ay balian ng mga paa, katulad ng ginawa, doon po sa dalawang magnanakaw na nasa tabi niya, pagdating po sa kanya, hindi na po ginawa yan. Sa lansan na salita ng Diyos, walang pwedeng mabali sa kanyang buong katauhan. Amen po ba? Kaya po, the cross became empty until the Sabbath day. And also, the evidence of the writing of the New Testament. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 12 to 19, as we examine the Word of God, Now, if Christ is preached that He has been raised from the dead, how do some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? The pagans never believe that there is resurrection of the dead. The atheists, the heathens never believe that there is a, no resurrection of the dead. But verse 13 up to 14 and 15 says, But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. Verse 14, And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty, and your faith is also empty. Wala na pong kahulugan ang pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos. If Christ was not risen from the dead, and there will be our faith, will always be in futility, if there is no Christ's resurrection. Are you with me? So in verse 15, ang sabi po ng salita ng Diyos, Yes, and we are called false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that He raised up Christ whom He did not raise up if in fact the dead did not rise. So mapapansin po natin, totoo ang ebidensya ng salita ng Diyos. Sabihin niyo nga po sa inyo katabi, totoo ang salita ng ating Panginoon. Dahil hindi po pwede magsinungaling ang ating Diyos. Amen po. Going back to the slide please, as we study the scripture, ang susunod po is the remarkable death by crucifixion of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 53, the whole chapter will speak to us how the Lord had greatly suffered. That's why in Isaiah 53, ang title niya po doon is the suffering servant. Siya po yung ama o siya po yung anak ng Diyos na pinadala ng ating amang nasa langit. But He suffered so much, so great, just for you and me to be saved, to be healed, to be set free, and to receive all the benefits at the cross of Calvary. Kasabihin niyo po sa inyo katabi, ganyan tayo kamahal ng ating Panginoon. Amen? 
I just came from La Union this morning. Nalulungkot po ako dahil ang ala ko wala na po yung mga nagpipinitensya. Sa sobrang nahong traffic at sa sobrang init. I thought wala na po yun. Pero to my dismay, talagang naroon pa po. I cannot forget one time I saw it with my two eyes. May binisita po kami kapatiran, doon din po sa same na lugar po yun sa La Union, to pray over sa isang kapatiran. Doon po sa may gilid ng kanyang bahay ay may umpukan ng mga kalalakihan na nagiinuman ng basi. At habang sila ko'y nagiinuman, medyo lumapit po ako kasi na-curious po ako doon sa ginagawa ko ng mga kalalakihan to. Doon nakita ko po yung isang lalaki nakatalikod habang isang lalaki nakatayo at sinusugatan yung kanyang likuran. At pagkatapos sa sugatan, dumugo yung kanyang likuran, sila ho'y pumila na, nakatake pa kanila mga pumila at saka pinalumpalo ang kanilang likod. Nakakalungkot, hindi po ba? So, Sir Joey, last week, last first service, talagang nagigalit po siya doon sa position na nakita po niya. And it's the same feeling, hindi po ba? Nakakagalit dahil marami po mga tao ang sincerely lost and sincerely wrong sa lahat ng kanilang ginagawa. That is why the death of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ is very remarkable. Hindi yun natin pwede sa tabi because the stoning sacrifice was already done and done once and for all. Wala nang pwede magpapako pa sa krus ng Kalbaryo maliban sa ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo. Amen? Wala nang pwede gumaya pa sa ginawa ng ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo maliban ang ating Diyos sa mga pangyarihan at ang kanyang pangalan na walang iba ko diyan ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo. Kaya nga po, after the basis, or the next basis of the resurrection is that there is the baptism of the Holy Spirit and His ascension. In Acts chapter 1, beginning verse 3 and verses 5, makikita po natin to whom He also presented Himself alive after His suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which He said, You have heard from Me, for John will be baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. After the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, after He ascended up to heaven, the promise and doing power of the Holy Spirit will rest not only upon the disciples, but to those who believe and receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. And that speaks you and me. Amen? Sabihin niyo nga sa inyo katabi, after you believe Jesus, resurrecting power, we receive the gifts and the baptism of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Amen po ba? Isa po yun sa binigay na regalo ng ating Diyos. Kaya kamanghamangha ang ginawa ng ating Panginoon. Moving on to the next slide, please. Tingnan po natin sa ating pagpapatuloy, pag-aaral sa salita po ng ating Panginoon. The fact is being substantiated. Number one, it is seen by the men who denied Him. Who denied Jesus? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 5. And that he was seen by Cephas, then by the twelve. Cephas is Peter. Alam po natin, during the time that the Lord was being dragged into crucifixion, narunod din po si Pedro, who was being asked for three times. He was being asked, sabi niya, you are Galilean, because you speak the language. Sabi niya, no, I am not with him. No, I have seen you with him. During his time that he was gathering the people, sabi niya, no, I am not with him. Until the rooster crowed, doon lang naalala ni Pedro, sinabi sa kanya ng ating Painon, pagkatapos tumilaok ng manok na ikatlong beses, itatatwa mo ako. Kaya ako siguro, na-twist yung salita ni Diyos, ni Asusay tuloy, si San Pedro na may dalang manok na may dalang rooster dahil po doon sa pagtilaok ng manok. Are you with me? You see how the devil twists what God has given unto us really. Of course, number two is that he was sent by the man he discipled. 
Sa 1 Corinthians 15 verse 5, ang sabi po doon, not only Peter saw him, but even those of the twelve. Lahat sila na disipulo, yung labing dalawang na disipulo, of course, except Judas, who betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ, ay hindi na po nasama dito. Si Sepa, si denied the Lord, but Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus. Ang susunod po, let's show it this, sent by his flock in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 6, and sabi po rito, after that, he was sent by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained to the present, but some have fallen asleep. Sino pa po ang nakakita sa kanya? Ang sumunod po is sent by his family. Ang sabi po dito, according to the scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 7, and also sent by his followers, after that, he was sent by James, then all, then by all the apostles. James is one of the half-brothers of the Lord Jesus Christ, or one of the brothers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 8, he was sent by his foe. Nakita siya mismo, walang iba, kundi ni Pablo. Then last of all, he was sent by name. Tingnan po natin, beginning verse 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Pakibalikan na po natin. Then last of all, he was sent by me also as by one word out of due time. Si Pablo po, naggalit na galit na hindi naniniwala sa resurrection. Na ipinapapatay ang lahat ng nangangaral na salita ng Diyos. Na ipinapaharang ang lahat ng mga kumilala at tumanggap kay Jesus, tinapay na tagamagkita sa kanyang buhay. But in Acts chapter 9, he was being, he had this personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ when the Lord spoke to him and asked him, Why are you persecuting me, Saul? And that is the time he surrendered everything unto the Lord. That's why he was one of the witnesses. Kaya hindi yun natin pwedeng pagkaila, hindi yun natin pwedeng sabihing hindi na buhay na magmuli ang Panginoon Yesus at basta ninakaw lang na kung sino mga tao ang kanyang katawan dahil maniwanag po ang ebidensya ng salita ng ating Diyos na buhay. Amen? Going on, moving on to the next slide, tingnan po natin ang susunod pa po natin pag-aaralan, tunghayan po natin, the resurrection appearances na magpapatutuo na ang ating Panginoong Yesus ay talaga po nabuhay na magpuli. Let's show everything. In or around Jerusalem, Mary Magdalene was there to the other woman, to Peter. After si Mary Magdalene kasama niya ang ibang mga kababaihan, nagtatakbo, bumalik siya kay Pedro sa mga apostol, sabi niya, sumama kayo sa akin. Tingnan niyo, the Lord has truly risen. Totoo ang kanya sinabi sa atin. Totoo ang kanya pinahayag sa atin. Totoo ang kanyang tinuran. Hindi ka naman, kailan man nagsinungaling ang ating Diyos. To the ten disciples, to the eleven, including Thomas, who was doubting during the time na pinipilan ng mga disciples, sabi niya, we have seen Jesus, we have seen the risen Christ. Ano po sabi ni Thomas, that unless Makita at mahawakan po ang kanyang kamay na nabutasan ng pako at ang kanyang pat, ang kanyang pagiliran. Hindi ako maniniwala. At nang nagpakita ang ating Panginoon, sabi sa kanya ng Diyos, mapalad ang hindi nakakakita pero naniniwala at napakapalad po natin naniwala tayo sa kapangyarihan ng ating Diyos sa buhay. Hallelujah! Amen! Sabi mo sa inyo kate, never doubt that the Lord has rose from the dead. He has risen. And moving on, at this ascension, of course, na ang po silang lahat, to the disciples on the Emmaus Road, naglalakad po yung kanyang mga disipulo, yung kanyang dalawang disipulo, Nang biglang lumapit po ang ating Panginoon at tinulungan po sila sa kanya lang ginagawa. At doon lang ulit din na recognize na ang itong Panginoon ay kasama natin. In Galilee and to the, two, uh, to the 500 people. Moving on to the next slide please. Masinip po natin na sinasabi na salita ng Panginoon. What is the importance of Christ's resurrection? Number one, it proves that He is the Son of God. Amen? I was watching the Son of God na pinakita po sa GMA 7 last Friday or Thursday. 
Tuwa-tuwa po ako sa pelikula niyon kasi doon na po nabanggit ng ating Panginoon that a man must be born again. A man must receive Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior for he to be connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. And for us to determine that he is the Son of God. Ang sabi po sa John chapter 10 beginning verse 17 and verse 18. Therefore, my Father loves me because I laid down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. And this command I have received from my Father. Only Jesus can lay His life for each and every one of us. The Bible says, Greater love is no one than this, but to lay His life for His friends. Sabihin nyo nga sa inyo katabi, kaya mo bang ibigay ang buhay mo para sa akin? Parang mahirap, hindi po ba? Kahit mag-asawa na kayo. Misan, parang ang hirap pa. Amen? Pero ang Panginoon, wala kagatol-gatol. Hindi nagdalawang isip. Ibinigay niya ang kanyang sarili para ikaw at ako ay mabuhay na magbuli. Para ikaw at ako ay makaranas ng buhay na walang hanggan para ikaw at ako'y magkaroon ng kumpletong kalayaan sa pagkakagapos sa tagkala ng kaaway para ikaw at ako ay magkaroon hindi lang ng kaligtasan kundi kapatawaran sa lahat ng ating mga kasalanan. And only Jesus can do that. Romans chapter 1 beginning verse 4 Ang sabi po na salita ng Diyos in Romans chapter 1 verse 4 And declare to me the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah! He's not just the Son of Man, but He is the mighty Son of God. Na nagkatawang tao. Kaya sabi po sa Philippians chapter 3, we're going to turn to the, to the scriptures. Sa dali po natin tingnan yan, ang sinasabi po na salita ng Diyos, in the book of Philippians chapter 3, beginning verse 5, ang sabi po na salita ng ating Panginoon, basahin lamang po natin sa dali. Ang sabi po rito, Oh, chapter 2 rather, beginning verse 5, Philippians chapter 2, beginning verse 5, that this might be you which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. That makes him the Son of God. Kaya nga po, when the time came that after Jesus spoke the last word at the Calvary, when He said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, I commit to you my spirit, and the whole heavens was darkened, and the Bible declares He gave us His ghost, His spirit. Ano po ang ninyari? The centurion that was watching in that event that was happening at the Calvary at that time, ang sabi po ng centurion na to, truly, He is not only a righteous man, but He is the Son of God. Hallelujah! Nag-witness na po kaagad yun sa kanyang puso at maipakita na siya ay anak ng ating Diyos na makapangyarihan. Paano pong bagay? It guarantees the efficacy of this redemptive death. Romans chapter 6 beginning verse 4 Therefore we were buried with him through the baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life. Balik po tayo sa ating kinagalanan. Tingnan niyo po ang sinabi po rito ng salita ng Panginoon. It guarantees the efficacy of His redemptive death. When the great Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus, a great Bible teacher in John chapter 3, met the Lord Jesus Christ asking just one question. Magaling pong tagapagturo. Magaling alam po ni Nicodemus ang patungkol sa scripture. Pero ano ang isang sinapanan niya? Sabi niya, Master, Rabbi, Rabboni, how can I enter heaven? Paano ako makakapasok sa langit? 
Hindi ba katanungan po natin lahat yan? Amen po ba? Hebrews 9.27 says, It is appointed unto men to die once after that judgment will come. Lahat po tayo ay dadaan sa kamatayan na after that judgment will come. And definitely, we could never know this. Kasi niya, he was so concerned about his soul, he was so concerned about the life after death. And he wants this assurance in his life. Sabi niyo mga sinyo katabi, do you want also the same assurance? Of course! Di ba? Ba? Kaya ang sabi sa kanya ng Panginoon, you must just be born again in verse 7 of John chapter 3. Ang sabi sa salita ng Diyos, kailangan mo may panganap na muli. Hindi niya po ito may luwa. Sabi niya, matanda na ako, paano ako babalik sa sinapupunan ng aking ginan? Napaka-imposible. But the Lord was speaking about the spiritual renewal, about the birth in the spirit, because the heart is the one that is being renewed. The spirit that we have here right now must be the one to be transformed. And right after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the disciples were all transformed by the power of the living God. Hallelujah! That's why after receiving Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, nagkaroon po ng pagbabagong takbo ng ating puso at ng ating isip. Nagkaroon ng redemptive power. Nagkaroon ng newness. Kaya nga makikita ninyo, mas masarap po ang nagsiswimming ngayon. Dahil mas kung nga daw ng pagkabuhay, pero mas masarap ang magpuri ngayon sa ating Diyos at sa Balisya, sa Spirito at Kapotongalan. Hallelujah! Glory to the living God. Sapagkat nananasan natin ang kanyang mayamang biyaya sa ating buhay. Nang niligtas niya po tayo, pinagaling niya na rin po tayo sa lahat ng ating mga sakit at karamdaman. Nang iligtas niya po tayo, pinatawad niya po tayo sa lahat ng uri ng kasalanan meron po tayo. Nang iligtas niya po tayo, kasama po doon ang pagbabagong ginawa ng Diyos sa lahat ng aspeto ng ating buhay. At yan ay ginawa lamang ng ating Panginoon. For the glory of the living God. Pangatlo pang bagay to verify the truth of the scriptures. In Psalms chapter 16, beginning verse 10, let's show the scriptures, please. For you will not leave my soul in show, or will you allow your Holy One to see corruption? Naranasan po yun ang ating Pailon. Next verse, please. And look. Chapter 24, beginning verse 45, Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the psalm concerning me. This refers to the Psalms chapter 16, verse 10 that we have read. In Luke, in verse 45, he said, And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scripture. You see? It says, the next uh, verse, and sabi po rito, it says that he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead, the third day. Ano ba po? Ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. At the start of the gospel, especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Ang sinasabi lang po ng Panginoon, repent and preach the word. Repent and make Jesus known. Are you with me? Kaya makikita po natin na ito po, according to the scripture, hindi lamang nasabi na saan, but it leads us to repentance and the remission of our sins as we have accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Pang-apat po na importansya ng Christ's resurrection is that it is a proof of future judgment upon the wicked. Acts chapter 17, 30 to 31. Let's show it, please. During these times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because He has appointed the day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom He has ordained. He has given assurance of this all by raising him from the dead. Listen, church. One of the importance is that the Lord is about to judge the wickedness of the nation. 
Habang kami po ay habang nagbakasyon po ako sa Dalit, nalungkot din po ako, isa pang kinalungkot ng puso po dahil ang mga tao, kaya ako nagka-traffic-traffic, yung mga kasama po namin, 11 hours nag-drive, alas stress na kumadaling araw, umalis ng Thursday, dumating po ng La Union ng alas dos ng hapon. Sa haba ho ng traffic. At kahit saan ka pumunta, lahat ng tao busy nagkakainan. Lahat ng tao ay abala sa maraming bagay. Hindi ko sinasabi masama po ito. Pero maliwanag ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos. Just like the days of Noah, where the people had no more time to seek God, where the people had forgotten what the Lord has done in Calvary. When the people doesn't recognize anymore the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. Just like the days of Noah where people will be caught unaware of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ because just like the days of Noah, everybody was busy, merry making, engaged in happiness and whatsoever in their lives. Fisted instead of fasting. Instead of seeking God, just like the days of Noah. That's why the Bible is declaring it just not verifies the truth of the scripture. It is a proof of the future judgment upon the wicked. Church, remember, we are already on the last days of the 12th hour, almost on the 12th hour. That's why we need to embrace not only God. Pero kailangan natin patibayin ang gusto ang ating pananampadaltaya because there's just a hairline difference in Christianity right now. Are you with me? Halos hindi po natin nga ma-differentiate. Madalas nga po natin sinasabing mga pastor. Madalas po natin ito naririnig kay Pastor Joey. Sinasabi po natin lagi, sinasabi po sa atin palagi ng ating mga senior pastors, Bishop Brother Ed, minsan hindi nakikita yung pagiging Christiano po sa atin. At ito po ay darating pagdating ng panahon. Pagdating po, ano po ang susunod? Pag lima, pang anim. The next importance is that it is the foundation for Christ giving the Holy Spirit and the spiritual life to His people. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 45. And so it is written, the first man Adam became a living being, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. After receiving Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, He brought to us the Holy Spirit of the living God, the third person in the Trinity. Because in 1 John 5, 7, sabi po na salita ng Diyos, there are three that were records in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Are you with me? That's why we continually receive the blessings that only the cross of Calvary, but also the infilling of the Holy Spirit upon us. When we receive Jesus, the born again po tayo, our spirit is being regenerated. And every day as we worship God, as we seek God, as we read the Bible, as we pray, as we intercede, then comes the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit infills us every day, then our faith is being strengthened more and more. Are you with me? Lalo pong napapalakas ang ating mga pananampalataya habang hinahanap natin ang katira ng Diyos. Pag-alil, it ensures the believers of His future heavenly inheritance. Wow! 1 Peter chapter 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inher inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Wow! Our inheritance, which is the heavens. Kaya nga ho yung kinakanta ho natin kanina, we are declaring, you were sent from heaven to earth, to earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Dahil darating po ang pagkakataon according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We who are in Christ will also rise from the dead and receive the infallible.
valuable gift, the blessed hope that the Lord is selling unto us. And that from corruptible to incorruptible to reign with God forever and ever. Kaya nga po sabi sa ito ng Panginoon sa mga disipulo in John chapter 14, I will leave you for a while. I will go to the place so that I can prepare the place for you. In my father's house, there are so many mansions. Sabi niyo nga sa ito katabi, handa na titirhan mo sa langit. Pag tinanggap natin ang ating Panginoon. Amen? Pero pag nireject natin ang binigay ng ating Diyos sa buhay, wala ka ang titirhan sa langit. Nasa impyerno, matitirhan. Eh, wala ka matitirhan sa impyerno. Are you with me, church? Totoo po ang parable ng rich man and the poor man, the rich man Lazarus. At yung mahirap na lalaki na sabay silang namatay. The other man went to heaven, the other one went to hell. Maliwan na sinasabi ng scripture, there is no in between. Wala pong purgatorio, mga kapatid. Either heaven or hell. Yan lang pupunta ng ating mga kaluluwa. Kaya sabi sa Hebrews 9, 27, disappointed and commanded to die once after the judgment comes. The soul will be the one to receive the judgment. Are you with me? Kaya importante yung mainuwaan po natin to because this gives us the hope in us. Pang-apang ito, it makes our and of his translation, when the Lord returns, yung kinikwento ko pa sa John chapter 14, beginning verse 3, pakita po natin, saka sa 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Sabihin nyo sa inyong katabi, makakasama natin ang ating Panginoon Yeso Cristo. <laughs> Excited po ba kayo? Yes! Bumalakpak na pa lahat! When my mom died and she passed away, I cannot forget that scenario. This is my personal testimony because I have seen it with my two eyes. And we were praying for her. We were, we were praying. We got their family. We gathered together. We were worshiping the Lord. Pinubulong ako po ang nanay ko. Sabi ko, Mami, we will worship the Lord and we will pray as we entrust everything to God. Sama po namin siya nagpupuri habang tumutulo yung kanyang luha. Nag-iingalo na ako nanay ko at time, hindi ko makakalimutan yung nakita ko. Habang nag-iingalo po siya, I saw her spirit met with the angels. Siya po ay binilutan ng damit na puti. At tumingi po siya sa aking nakangiti. Tutuwa po ko si Diyos and I know that is the assurance of every believer that belongs to Christ. And this is my personal testimony. Because God's word is true, He never lies. We have a great inheritance. Wala ako, baliwala yung inheritance na meron lang tayo dito sa langit, sa lupa. Kung bala sa inheritance na meron po sa langit, there are no more tears, there are no more suffering, there is no more pain. We're in heaven where we belong. That's why we are awaiting for this to happen. But definitely, God set a condition. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whoever, whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Kaya importante tanggapin natin ang ating Diyos. Amen? Ano po sabi sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning verse 14? Sabi po rito, For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with Him those who sleep in Jesus. Yung mga namatay, na kinilala ang Panginoon Yesus Christo, binang Panginoon Tagapagliktas na kanilang buhay, will be resurrected from the dead. Going back to the slide, please, it makes us available the presence of Christ and His power over sin, in our daily lives, Ephesians chapter 1, beginning verse 18 to 20, the eyes of your understanding be 
being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he had worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Back to the slide, please. Nakikita po natin ang kahalagahan po nito that in the presence of God that was available to us, there is power over sin in our daily lives. That's why whenever we confess our sins in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, God is just, God is faithful to forgive us, to cleanse us. Sabi niyo ang sinyo katabi, pinatawad na tayo ng ating Panginoong Yesu Christo. Sa lahat ng ating pagkakamaling pagkakasala. Amen? And last slide, ngayon po natin, ang huli po natin slide, the benefits of resurrection, number one, is the assurance of our salvation. Matthew chapter 28, beginning verse 1 to 8, yung pong ating binabasa po kanina, ito po nagbigay sa atin ng assurance na tayo may iniligtas na ligtas ng ating Panginoon. Sabi niyo nga sa inyong katabi, sigurado ka na bang naligtas? Tinanggap mo na bang Panginoong Yesu Cristo sa puso mo, sa buhay mo? Kasi yun ang katiyakan. It validates our faith. John chapter 20, beginning verse 19 to 29, First Corinthians chapter 15, beginning verse 12 to 19. It validates our faith. Nagbibigay po ito ng katotohanan sa ating pananampalataya ng Panginoong Yesus ang siyang nagbibigay sa atin ng buhay. And of course, it ensures our blessed hope. Titus chapter 2, beginning verse 13. Ang sabi po na salita ni Diyos in Titus chapter 2, beginning verse 13. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we end, this is our challenge today, brothers and sisters. If nakilala na po natin ang ating Panginoon Yesu Cristo bilang Panginoon tagapagligtas ng ating buhay, Meron pa po bang dahilan para itakwil po natin siya sa ating buhay? Matapos po natin maranasan ang maraming bagay na pinagkaloob niya po sa atin. Halos hindi po natin mabilang answered prayers po natin. Halos hindi po natin mabilang ang mga himala na ginawad ng Panginoon sa ating lahat. Kulang pa po ba yan para ipakita ng Diyos ang kanyang kapangyarihan sa ating mga buhay? Pinatunayan niya that after he was crucified, hindi nagtapos ang kanyang mighty words at mighty acts. Nang nabuhay siya pang buli, kasama niyang pinagkaloob ang kanyang banal na spirito para tayo lalang lumakas tumibay sa ating mga pananampalataya sa kanya. Kaya po sa umaga nito, as we celebrate the goodness, the Lordship of Jesus, His resurrecting power, Isa lamang po, pwede natin gawin. Let's ask God to show and acknowledge that He alone is our Savior. That He alone ang kailangan natin sa ating buhay at wala nang iba. That only Jesus can suffice everything that we need. That only Jesus can satisfy everything that we need that only Jesus can give us everything because He is our eternal hope. Kung may mga pagkakatong po na nagtududa po tayo sa kanyang kayang gawin sa ating buhay, kung may mga pagkakatong na paghihinaan po tayo ng loob, ito na po yung pagkakataon that has continually surrender return unto the Lord Jesus Christ for God never stopped loving us for God never stop caring for us. For God never stop doing great things upon our lives. Palakpaka po natin ang Diyos. Palakpaka po natin ang Diyos. And as we allow the Holy Spirit to continually move in our hearts and our lives, shall we just lift our hands? Sumunod lang po lahat sa isang nagling panalangin. Sabihin po natin, Panginoong Yesus. Maraming maraming pong salamat sa isang pagkakataon na ikaw ay aking makilala at maranasan sa aking buhay. Dali nito po ako, hindi lang ako nagpapahayag ng aking pananampalataya sa iyo. Dali nito po akong nagpapahayag 
papakot ba ba? Minsan pa pong umihingi ng tawa. Sa bawat naging pagkukula. Sa bawat naging pagkakamali. Hugasan niyo po ako, Panginoong Yesus. Ang iyong banalag ko. Sa lahat ng akin naging pagkakamali. Sa lahat ng akin naging pagkakasal. Nais ko pong maranasan kang muli sa aking buhay. Sa aking buhay. Habang ako po'y nagpapakumbaba, ikaw po maging Panginoon, tagapagligtas, buhay na Diyos, ng aking buhay, sa pangalan ng Panginoong Isus. As you lift your hands right now, begin to pray. Ask God to renew the faith. Ask God to restore what the enemy had stolen Ask God for His redemptive sacrifice to manifest. Ask the Lord right now for in His presence, in His glory. God will continually give us an assurance and security as we acknowledge Him. I rebuke every voice of darkness, every 
lies and deception of the enemy. No more of the lies in Jesus' name. For they were redeemed. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And we are saved by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. Washed, justified, sanctified by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, I release and speak your healing grace and your healing touch from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Let them receive your healing, your personal touch as we be queen by your stripes, by your stripes, we are made whole. We are healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, prostrate is healed in Jesus' name. As we lose the killing right now in the name of Jesus. And their mouth is in the heart is being healed in the name of Jesus. Even enlargement of the heart is being healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And even God healing even leukemia in the name of Jesus. Even amongst your family right now, God is visiting your family. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, complete their joy, complete our joy, complete our joy. As we receive right now the answers to our prayers in the name of Jesus. As we receive your miracle in the name of Jesus. I cancel even poverty in Jesus' name. It's spiritual poverty in the name of Jesus. I rebuke backsliding spirit in Jesus' name. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak the fire of God to come down again upon the anoint us once again. God, give us once again the anger, earnest desire to know you more, to love you more. To behold you more, God. To pray more. In Jesus Christ's name. As you restore the relationship with you. Restore every relationship with the family. In the name of Jesus. As in the moment, it was a family, a family of the Lord Jesus. Was a kid of the Lord and deep and cackle no one. Was a kid of the Lord and deep and cackle no one. Was a kid of the Lord and deep and cackle no one. Jesus and just even unfaithfulness of God in Jesus name and let there be faithfulness Lord in every spouse in the name of Jesus as you heal the broken relationship oh God sa pangalan ng Panginoon Jesus Lord I pray the fresh anointing of the spirit of God descend right now and Lord let every man and woman in this place receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the freshness of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And let us be refreshed right now in Jesus' name. Sealed by the blood of the Lamb, the power of the Holy Spirit, of Abi Dinagap na Himadam Ginon. Hama kami ng pumulit ng papa sa lamat. Let's give the best love, offering of praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. receive all the glory, receive all the honor, God. This we ask, this we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless us all.